Our most recent webcast brought you a discussion between Platinum's co-founder, Care Nielsen, and Morningstar's Director of Manager Research, Tim Murphy. In a broad-ranging discussion, they touched on a number of macro topics, including emerging markets, geopolitics, and currency. Here, Kerr discussed some of the larger emerging market economies and some of the opportunities in India, which are often overlooked uh, in favor of China. And would you believe that credit is growing at the slowest uh, rate since independence in 47? So credit is growing at the level of 4% a year, mm. and yet the economy is growing at 7 I throw that in to remind people of what linkages they think are real are not real. So everyone has the view that if China contracts, you'll see where I'm going, mm -hmm. if China has a slower growth rate of credit, that it has to go into very slow growth. It's not necessarily true. Here we have a working example of a very interesting economy growing at 7% real, with credit growing at slightly more than half that rate. Care also discussed the ongoing commentary around interest rates, particularly within the US, and just reminded investors that they shouldn't be unduly distracted by this. Again, it's the constituents. So I'd rather look at the individual markets rather than the index. Mm -hmm. And the index, uh, which is 54% you know, weighted by the US, I think is a little more challenged than individual opportunities outside the US. Sorry to bang on about that, but it is to try and get people to think more broadly about here's an index, but it doesn't represent the world's activity. But it, it gives more context to the problem of, of investing, which is either your index-led or your opportunity-led. Um, where we see the, the, the um, rates moving in the States is uh, upward, and real rates are starting to now lift. So this is the inflation-adjusted rate. And in the resources space, Care discussed oil, including the supply and demand dynamics and different price scenarios. A lot of, um, of oil um, is, and oil development's been, de development's been deferred. And the problem we have here is that um, we have a decay. So the, the world uses about 95 million barrels a year. Electric cars will cut into that, but of course you've, you've then got to factor in a greater use of, of petroleum products as these other parts of the world, the Vietnam, Vietnamese, the, the Indonesia and so on, grow with their two-wheelers and so on. So I don't think you can look to electric vehicles removing uh, much supply, much demand from the, from the demand for, for, for oil. So the, for the moment, I think you want to work on the basis that 90 to 95 million barrels a day is what we will be needing. Kerr also discussed global currency movements, including describing how Platinum plays currency and what retail investors can learn from this. Where we think uh, one should be is much more um, willing to own the underlying currencies than we would have for quite a while now, because the yen and the euro have moved a lot and have been weaker for quite a while now, and we think they tend to go stronger. So I, I think the, the point I'm trying to get across is that it's not a daily decision. You decide what are the driving factors behind a currency, you observe the day-to-day -day, um, fluctuations, but there doesn't it doesn't change your inherent view. And historically, what happens in the with the US currency, and this is what makes it a bit more difficult this time around, is that as soon as the U.S. starts really growing faster than you know, its, its normal pattern, you get rates kicking up, and that tends to result in the currency weakening because of two things. One is your, it drags in imports because the U.S. has a chronic current account deficit, and uh, the interest rate doesn't quite fully compensate. So right now you could argue that the dollar has to go strong because its rates are rising, but it doesn't always follow that because it's the, the sucking in of imports that, that means a lot of funding is required. And in a theme that was emphasised throughout, Kerr also explained why he believes Australian investors should have a higher allocation to global equities. I actually was, uh, did some work on this and he, he showed that um, the franking credit is, looms large in mind, but small in fact. So the, the large impact is that um, imputation gives you huge benefits for, and why you should have a lot of money here. But in fact, it's about 1.5% extra 
benefits you receive versus international equities. We worry that people become so comfortable with the idea that there's low risk and there's plenty of opportunity here, but this is a very crowded market. Mm -hmm. Whereas you, you look at global markets um, and there's far better value from what we can see and there's much better choice. And those are what give you longer term better returns in our view, but it doesn't feel like that to many investors, unfortunately. Any advice in this video is general advice prepared by Morningstar without reference to your financial objectives, situation or needs. You should consider the advice in light of these matters and any relevant product disclosure statement before making any decision to invest.